And now we can begin talking about energy distribution for data centers in our modular, scalable UPS systems. Our experts are Diana Garcia and Nico Ninoff. So I'll let you guys introduce yourself, and thanks again. Thank you very much, Dave, for the introduction, and welcome, everyone, to the last session, I think it's now, um, for you, uh, for those of you who stayed um, until now and um, want to stay with us until the end. Um, it's totally worth it. We have a special um, configurator at the end we want to talk about. But uh, let me start with a brief introduction first. So my name is Nico Nino. I'm expert in the data center um, sub-distribution. So we call this the white space or the server rooms. Um, and I'm active in this role since uh, five years, so with ABB for 10 years now, and um, have seen quite some kind of international layouts, um, IC market, Asian market, US market, and many more. Um, and I'm looking very much forward to um, show you a little bit what we've seen and, and what, from our point of view, meets, let's say, most of the market needs um, for the sub-distribution. And with me today will be Diana Garcia. Who's, she's a global product manager for MIT and High Power UPS. And um, before I hand over to Diana to kick off the UPS part, I will very briefly like to explain uh, the agenda for this last session. So we're going to talk about three things. First will be pay as you grow. So um, a different building strategy for data centers. Then we are, uh, Diana is going to explain the ABB modular UPS, which is fast in class. And then I will finish with the remote power panels, which are giving you more and less space. So regarding pay as you grow, that's something that probably some colos um, in the audience may know or may have heard of. Um, I would like to briefly explain it so we, we are all talking about the same when we say pay as you grow. So for us, pay as you grow is a combination of solution scalability and redundancy. So when we say scalability, it means you have a very low investment at the beginning and you're able to basically order additional modules or even complete building blocks that you need in the near future. As soon as you need, uh, as soon as you know what type of clients you will have and um, what type of loads they are going to connect to your infrastructure, if you're a colo provider, or if you put it into, um, if, if you put yourself into the shoes of the uh, data center operators and electric planners, typically the the IT guys um, will randomly select where to select. Uh, we're randomly selecting where to plug in which type of um, server load, depending where which plug is actually free. So from an active planning point of view, it's quite difficult to kind of give all sockets maximum power. And that's what we also recommend um, to keep scalable. So as soon as you get your, your IT guys define what type of load is going to be connected to the sub-distribution, that's the moment where you install the last module of the sub-distribution part, which is the miniature circuit breaker. Then the, the other element of the pay as you grow, the redundancy, is of course something that is very important, especially when we talk about um, expansion. So we ensure full redundancy during the expansion, expansion process with uh, a bypass scenario. And um, it's not even necessary to turn off the supply to one cabinet or one distribution board, which we call remote power panels, because the whole system is touch-proof and hot swappable. So you can actually add or change devices while the main supply is still on. Of course, you, of course, you have to turn off the um, part load behind the individual breaker, small breaker, but you don't have to turn off the big breaker to find co complete RPC. And of course, it's very easy to maintain during operation due to this hot pluggable functionality. So to sum it up, pay as you grow for us means scalability and redundancy can help you to develop your pay as you grow building strategy. And with keeping that in mind, I'd like to um, introduce what's happened to us so far after, basically after COVID, 
um, or after the start of COVID, as uh, Dave mentioned in the introduction, many people are now staying at home and um, even more are now starting to stay at home again. And that means a lot to streaming services. That means a lot to storage services and hosting. And while this happens, we actually try to reduce a couple of um, features, let's say, or um, to values when it comes to data center um, expansion or new data center builds. The most imp important one um, from our point of view is the provisioning time. When I started five years ago joining the data center team, we were talking about at least two years from planning until build. And for medium-sized data centers, um, due to really smart packaging and e-houses and creating building blocks that fit all, like um, also Alec mentioned in the previous sessions with the different, different modules starting from half a megawatt and got going higher, it's even possible to kind of half time that, so down to eight to 10 months. Um, with prefabricated systems and modular solutions, it's able to, uh, we're enabling fast parallel installation and therefore also reducing the construction costs on site. And especially for co-locations in cloud, cloud data centers, um, we're trying to kind of give more power and heat rejection into smaller spaces with fewer qualified people on site. So trying to, to reduce the maintenance costs dramatically. And last but not least, data center sustainability, driven by reducing the waste of material, minimizing carbon footprint for the full life cycle of the facility, and also recycling as much as possible of the installed material. So these to us are the, let's say, four most important values, which we learned during and also now after this uh, first COVID period, if I may name it like that. And with this, I would like now to um, give the ball and the word to Diana Garcia. She's going to talk about the ABB modular UPF best in class. And Diana, before you kick off the topic, maybe you want to introduce yourself first. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Nico. Um, I am Diana Garcia, Global Product Manager for the Mid High Power UPS. Uh, by APB Power Protection. Um, I am glad to present um, our APB modular UPS solutions, which responds to the pay-as-you-grow building strategy for the data center industry. As Nico already mentioned, the increased demand for data center storage are driving modular and prefabricated data centers. So large operate, operators are looking for scalable power solutions that enable fast data center provisioning, lower upfront investments, and reduce operational costs. In the middle of all the solutions architecture that we have seen today, the UPS play a vital role on the data center infrastructure providing clean and reliable power. ABB, therefore, has been working on creating new innovative UPS designs to support the mentioning drivers that we have there. ABB Modular UPS is a double conversion power supply. So it means um, that we have a double conversion between a, a double conversion AC and DC and DC to AC providing a clean power. It is based on the patented decentralized parallel architecture, what we call DPA. With this architecture, each power module in the UPS has his own rectifier, his own inverter, battery charger, static bypass, system control logic for autonomous operations. The modular architecture allows to scale the power on demand 
and lower the upfront investment, as mentioning. It is possible to add power module not only to increase the power capacity, but as well to add the redundancy. So, for example, if you have a system with N module which covers the power needs for a particular load, and then you add an extra module, you are adding redundancy for the critical components because you have in every power module the rectifier, the inverter, and the battery charger, but as well you have the static bypass distribution. So when we add modular techno more power module, we are adding not only power capacity as well, we are adding redundancy on the distribution path. And this is happening because in the DPA architecture, the static bypass is decentralized. So it means that if you need to conduct maintenance in a system with N plus one modules, the N module will operate in normal conditions, protecting your critical load in the decided mode, even in double conversion or from the row main supply. Further to the modularity and the DPA architecture allows the online swappability for power modules, providing uh, basically continuous uptime, uh, business uptime. Online swappability means that the module can be removed and inserted without the need to power down or transfer to row main supplies. This unit aspect improves the serviceability and the availability. As the IT demand can be increased very fast in the case of the co-locations, for example, the UPS power, re power requirement should be able to respond to this need. And the modular nature of the DPA technology makes it really easy to add modules or to increase the power capabilities. So you don't need to over specify the initial configuration um, just to, to have for future expansions. So you just need to add the modules as you need in the situation that you have. So to satisfy the mid to large data center customer demands, APP has developed three product families based on the DPA platform. To start on the left, we have the DPA 250 S4, and it's addressed for mid-sized data center with single power capacity up to 300 kilowatts. This system is based on power module of 50 kilowatts. The product was already introduced to the market in 2018 and is the best in class uh, UPS offering the best efficiency of 97.4. For the mid to high power infrastructures, we have the DPA 500 UPS offering 500 kilowatt in a single system based on power module of 1000 kilowatt of 100 kilowatt and for large data centers and collocations we have introduced successfully the new APP megaplex DPA with rated power from of 1 megawatt up to 1.5 based on power modules of 200 kilowatt the new UPS offers the best in class efficiency, and we can say that it's the big sister of the new technology of the DPA 250 S4. One of the values that we have with these systems is not only the high efficiency, as well, we are working on the footprint because we know for the modular data center solutions or um, prefabricate solutions, we have all, I mean, we have as a value the space. Then the footprint should be compact and the high power density as well.
So um, what we have now here, um, it's the way how we can build and scale up or down the system. And basically, we offer in the system, for example, for the mid-size solutions to grow in a vertical way or in a horizontal, horizontal way. In that case, in the picture that we are looking is the DPA 254, and in that system we have a UPS frame with six power slow to host up to six 50 kilobat modules. The incoming section that we have here can be placed on the bottom or on the top, um, responding to the installation needs. Same, for example, for the connection that we are going to have upstream with a single or dual input feed, or to have the batteries with a common battery or a separate arrangement per power module. In the power module, we can see the handles, which allow the operator to slide in or slide out at the models. And the frame is provided with rails to avoid wrong module placement, so meaning the serviceability of the system by adding, removing during the maintenance or during the installation is really fast and avoid human mistakes. One particular thing that we have been working on the technology as well is when we are inserting a new module in an existing system, for example, before the module is connected to the critical load, the module will perform a self-check, calibrating the output, the frequency to avoid wrong operations that can cause that we lose the load uh, just because of these operations. But in the case that we have, as I mentioned, um, a power demand increase, then we can not only grow vertical, we can grow horizontal as well, and then we can parallel frames. Um, and in that case, we can parallel up to five frames to get 1.5 mega. The added parallel frames are connected to the system by using a ring communications. So it means the last frame is connected to the first frame. And in case there is something wrong in the middle, still we have the monitoring and the control of the parallel modules and the frames inside the system. This is responding to the availability and reliability of the technology that we are offering uh, for, the, for, for this critical uh, installations. So we have now the pooling, and um, we want as well ask you, what is the largest UPS you have designed into your data center so far? So I will give a few uh, a minute to, to respond into the pool, which is located on the right side of, of the, the of the screen.
So I can see that many of the participants say that they have been designing, uh, for example, one mega UPS, uh, a few of them as well, uh, above of 1.5 mega. So we are working already for the standardized uh, hyperscale UPS. So um, with the latest UPS that we have been presenting to the market, indeed, we can create a power, I mean, power solution in a single system um, having up to 1.5 megawatt. Uh, this uh, UPS is based in power module of 250 kilowatt. The UPS system is consistent of power modules of three power slots to have up to 750 kilowatt, or we can have power modules, power, power frames with four um, power uh, modules to have a power rating of one mega. The power frames are connected to the distribution frames, and these distribution frames can be 1 mega or 1.5. The smart mechanical design of the power modules and frames and the DPA architecture have allowed us to have an ultra high power density solution, and in comparison, with the modular UPS solutions that we have today in the market, we can reduce dramatically the footprint. But how we achieve basically as well, this is this is scalability, the simple serviceability. And it was one of the requirements for the mechanical designs for the power module was the safety and the easy to handle during installations and maintenance. For example, for power and control connection inside the UPS frame are done using the plug-in concept. The power connections of uh, the power boost bars in the power frames are done um, just by manipulating the, ha the power handle located on the power module on the bottom by lifting the handle and sliding the level across the module, it is connected or disconnected to the main boost bars on the rear of the UPS frame. Same concept is managed, for example, for the communications on the top of the modules with the pins. So as you can see in the picture, the power distribution is done simple with the boost bars, and then we are really reducing as well zero uh, the wiring between the power frame. Here, just a quick picture how we as well is done with the serviceability. We have um, the module slider, and here we see how the module is a slide in and a slide out. Uh, thanks to the wheels, uh, the, mo the movement is really done uh, smoothly. So in the next, um, we are going to ask you, which is the, as well, the redundancy level that we have, that you have been selected in the last data center design that you have built. So I will give you a little bit less time, 20 seconds because we are already um, coming to the end and we want to listen to Nico. So we see the clear tendency for the three uh, three configurations. So with our modular UPS, we allow we allow to build as well the steer configurations. For example, the internal redundancy N plus one, reducing the footprint. Um, but then as well we can 
allow the system to work in the different uh, power distributions that we have been discussing today. Um, I will handle to my colleague Nico, who is going to tell us more about the scalable power distribution solutions for the critical infrastructure. So, Nico. Let me handle to you. Yeah. Thank you, Diana. Well, Thanks yes. a lot. Yeah. I'd like just to use the same view and now go a little bit deeper into this um, boxes, which you can see here on the slide. So um, we call it PDUs or remote power panels. And these boxes actually are something that we are also able to supply as ABB. And it has a very similar split among the tier redundancy and scalability level from megawatt point of view. So if I just go um, to this next slide, you see now the incoming from the DPA, which, uh, with, which Diana just presented. And we are actually talking now about the scalable and redundant power with the best efficiency for your infrastructure. So whenever we want to uh, keep an eye on tier three and tier four data centers, uh, we do exactly the same like with the modular UPS and main distribution, like we going to do a two end configuration where the um, remote power panels sit uh, back to back or side by side. We can also fit it all into um, the same enclosure and have internal redundancy, which is allowed to data center operators um, between tier one and tier two. And of course, um, we have the biggest panels of uh, one megawatt inside a housing that actually fits uh, very closely to a server row to supply um, a range of servers redundantly. And how these remote power panels are, are built, actually, or what's inside, that's what I want to show you with our remote power panels, giving you more in less space section, which is the last for you today, before we go to the configuration part. So scalable and redundant power with the best efficiency for your infrastructure, to us means the right and, and the same efficiency along the complete distribution chain, starting from the primary distribution level zero um, down to the sub-distribution level one, and then splitting it up to um, RPPs and bus per distribution system, depending on the country or habit you have building your data centers, and then supplying the IT equipment actually through the REC PDUs um, sitting inside the server REC. So that's a typical distribution plan. So Alex presented earlier today in the single line diagrams, just in, in a little bit different view here. So when we look at this, um, I'd like to explain now the sub-distribution level two, how actually our remote power panels are um, designed. And they're designed um, to be really small in footprint. So what you see here in these pictures is just uh, 350 millimeters in depth and um, 500 in, in width. So it's really something that can fit at the end of a server row, for example, and supply the complete server row with, with up to half a megawatt of power redundantly. Now what's inside this small cabinet is um, really a molded case of breakers sitting on top. Um, then we are using the Smithline touch proof system. This is the one that I mentioned earlier with the hot swappable um, capabilities to add um, devices under um, main supply still on, so hot swappable. And of course, um, network analyzers sitting in the front door and our uh, new circuit monitoring system with the ability to trigger alarms as well when, for example, one of the branches goes uh, about 40%. Uh, which would, which necessarily would mean that um, being ready to take over the B side, you don't have to go higher than 50% in any case, but uh, we triggered first alarms of 40% load already of the MCB. The monitoring system is actually sitting uh, with main CTs right after the um, molded gate breaker and with branch sensors um, sitting right on top of the circuit breakers 
measuring um, the current without any additional um, space needed in the complete cabinet. So we're not wasting any beam rail space here um, while using the branch monitoring system. And now I would like to briefly make sure that, that we're all, all on the same page when I talk about these level zero, one, two, three distribution. And I have a poll for you quickly just to, to get a feeling um, which is the deepest granularity level where you typically would install monitoring um, for the energy or current or um, power in total? So is it the level zero primary distribution, level one subdistribution, level two subdistribution to the servers, or would you even measure the energy down to the rack PDUs, uh, so the last um, handover point to the server? I'll give you another 30 seconds to finish the poll, and then I'll be right back with you. All right, thank you. So I see the results. Some, most of you actually would do it on even on level three on the REC PDU level. That's impressive. Cool. So that's actually something that we can, um, where we can support you with our monitoring solution. Um, so just to give you give you a brief indication, we can measure um, up to a one percent scalability. Um, accuracy on, on full scale values here on the breakers. And that will be actually the handover point to the REC PDU. So that's the, the level two, level three measurement, which we do in the same system. We call it the circuit monitoring system. It sits here in the remote power panels, right? Very close to the, to the circuit breakers, to the main circuit breakers, and um, can even be scaled up to uh, multiple devices in a row, as we can see here on the picture. Now, coming a little bit to the, to the values, and I hope that, that most of you can identify themselves with, with one of these groups here, design and specification phase of the data centers, then um, getting, getting it over to the guys who actually have to build it, the panel builders and installers who have to do the system integration on site. Um, and of course, the operators who are actually running the whole data center so I'm not going to read all the values um, to you, just to give you a brief overview that we have for sure the complete um, the complete value chain covered, starting from the very early design and specification phase with with a time saving configurator, um, over to the installers and planners where we can export actually a full bill of material and wiring diagram, which the, the planner can send immediately over to the installer. And, and panel builder to assemble the solution. And really smart commissioning makes it possible to, um, with, with this line, to assemble the complete solution within almost half time compared to a regular DIN rail, DIN rail distribution. And of course, the operators um, do benefit of this complete solution as well, because um, energy efficiency is something that we definitely take care of while monitoring the system. We pay attention to um, consume less energy as possible with the monitoring devices as such. And of course, easy and quick maintenance uh, with the hot swappable solutions used inside the remote power panels is ensured um, without any downtime. So you don't actually have to switch off the main supply. It's all touch proof and um, can be operated easily under, under voltage, under power. Now coming back to the first group, design and specification phase. Um, that's something which I would like to emphasize a little bit, our um, data center configurator. So this is something um, which basically focuses on the sub-distribution portion of the data center. Um, it's available on um, iOS, on iPads, and it's also available on the web via Google Chrome browser. So um, we'll also distribute this uh, link to all of you who participated. and. Um, those of you who, who stayed until now, those who stayed until the end, would like to um, give you the opportunity um, and let you 
kind of design your, your next project with this configurator and we'll come back to you for free with some design um, aspects or, or hints or actually tips and tricks for your special design of your next data center. The app is for free. Using the app is also free. And the, at the end of the configuration phase, uh, with the app or with the Chrome version, you'll get a um, complete summary of your project. You can email it to yourself or even send it over to us, and we can get back to you within um, a minimum amount of time and help you with the design even further. So consultants typically are um, the people who are using our configurator because it's really time saving at the beginning of the data center project when it comes to the, the configuration phase at the very beginning. And the main benefit of this configurator, if you have not used it before, is that what you configure actually here on the right side, so it's asking you kind of something about the monitoring type, um, what type of monitoring level you would like to install, and so on. And on the left side, it's immediately configuring the complete configuration in 3D. So that's something that is really um, first, first of a kind in the data center configuration world where you can immediately see the whole panel building up in 3D next to the configuration engine. And that's something that's very valuable to consultants when they speak to their clients, they can actually show the clients um, what they are currently talking about. So if you're talking about a single line diagram and um, short acronyms, it's a different discussion than if you're talking about basic questions on the data center, like the IT load and monitoring levels and then having the complete thing building up in 3D in front of the client. That's, that's always a great wow effect when we go to customer meetings with it. And of course, um, constructors and EPCs have um, additional projects which can be planned in even shorter time. So you, as, as a consultant, you can do more in less time. Um, so managing more projects in parallel. So that's basically a, the key benefit of this data center. All right, so thanks a lot for the attention. Um, I see now we are running out of time and would like to end this last session and finalize it with the quick Q&A. So thanks a lot, for, a lot for listening so far. And um, now we are going into the past Q&A session. Thanks, Nico. Thanks, Anna. I think that was very informative. We have a couple questions coming in. Nico. Um, Data center users are, are starting to use more and more uh, uh, bus bar distribution versus RPPs or PDUs. What 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 can we do for them? Yes, yeah, sure. Thanks, Dave. Um, so basically, um, almost the same core of components also fits into um, bus bar distribution systems, and we partner up with with a couple of um, bus bar manufacturers out there in the market. And depending on, on which country you're in, we can help you also to find the right partner. Um, in some countries, it's even um, also an, an ABB solution. In other countries, we partner up with, with local manufacturers of bus bar and supply them with components, with, with pre-tested solutions for the bus bar. Oh, understood. And uh, with the discussion previously around the smart components, and, and uh, Alec in an earlier session mentioned uh, uh, breakers as being smart, uh, uh, what do we do around, first of all, gathering the data, and second of all, uh, making sure it, it remains our data, it's, it's uh, secure, cyber secure? Right, so when it comes to cyber security, um, we've, we've definitely understood that to our clients, it's important to, to store the data inside the devices securely. So we are using here um, secure storage inside, for example, the branch monitoring system. And when it comes to reading the data, of course, uh, we support Modbus, for example, Modbus CCP, but we definitely recommend to, in, especially inside data centers, to use SNMP, so the Smart Network Transport Protocol, which is, which is the only protocol in the data center environment that supports end-to-end -end encryption. So I think that's something very um, critical when, when it comes to gathering all the measurement data from the middleware 
and then transporting it over to the monitoring um, overall monitoring system or DCIM. Great. And then uh, uh, the, the question of, uh, of uh, being scalable can how, how do we add new uh, loads, new circuits to 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 the uh, to the panels? Is that something we need to hire an electrician for, or? Yeah, good question. Actually, we don't we don't necessarily need um, an electrician when the panel is is standing there and it's up and running. Um, all these miniature circuit breakers here can be installed with trained personnel, so it doesn't necessarily need to be an electrician as long as um, it's below uh, 63 amp, for example. So, for example, even the IT guys can ask devices here um, and then turn them on if they if they consider themselves as trained personnel. So, of course, they have to do some training, but they don't have to be full electricians to do so. And, and for the audience, this depends on the, the location. Uh, in, in different parts of the world, the, uh, the codes are different. So, in some some cases you cannot do that. Uh, yeah, the, the thing to keep in mind is this is designed around a touch proof uh, system, so it's it's fairly uh, um, you're basically insulated, or, or it's very difficult to actually touch any live parts given the design used in this in this panel. And uh, you can kind of see that in the uh, the, the the top view there. Yeah. Over here in the picture, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. So, so the the bus bar is actually on the darker gray portion there. So, yeah. anyway, very good. Even touch it, yeah. Okay. And I think we're at a close. And I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to join us. And as a reminder, of course, you'll be receiving an email with all the presentation materials, including all the links to the uh, like the configurator Nico was talking about, as well as all our other stuff, and the event recording. Uh, I'll apologize for the uh, the technical difficulties we had with the uh, with the beeping in the WebEx, but but for sure that's uh, something we'll, we'll work on moving forward. When you do exit the session, you will be given the chance to fill out a survey. Please fill out the survey. We take these very seriously. We want to improve uh, the experience for you and and bring you more relevant details and topics as time goes by. Uh, so any feedback you have is very much appreciated. With that, from all of the team here at ABB, I want to wish everybody well, and please stay safe, and thanks for your time. We really appreciate it. Bye-bye.